Hello and welcome to Destiny, the open door, and our spiritual life teachings. We are welcoming in the journey through spiritual teachings. This is day four. In my quest to find that which is interesting of a topic of discussion for today, I chose something to make you think about your journey in a way that is most helpful, I feel, in the journey of life where we must discern where we retrieve, research, and perceive information that may or may not be of our highest good. There stands a topic that I feel may be helpful to you in your journey. So let us begin process of trying to, in some significant way, shed light on what you all are faced with currently. You have distraction of media all the different networks talking about the weather, politics, entertainment, drama, comedy, and all other vices to keep you in your thought processes what I feel is a distraction. Right? Yes, <laughs> all of these different nuances are disturbances. They are disruption. They are interruption. They are interference. They are diversions, if you will. They are past times. <laughs> they are amusement and recreation. And sometimes they even take care of our everyday activity of life. But they also bring about anxiety, agitation, bewilderment, and confusion. So we must, in our finite minds, begin to focus inward, begin to let the light in. To allow for us not to be so consumed with that which is a disturbance, a distraction on our lives. Don't limit how things manifest is one of many things that I have done in my past. You know, sometimes uh, people would bless me with money, bless me with food, bless me with clothing, bless me with a place. And I would, in my past anyway, just thank them in kind and move on. Sometimes I would not accept these different things of charity. 
Sometimes I would just walk away smiling. <laughs> and sometimes we miss our blessing. We miss out on our blessing. If that is you, then this message may be for you. So don't limit how things manifest is one of many things that I have done in my past. Limiting because others may have something to say that will hinder or obstruct you on your journey of life. Dr. Joshua Stone shines his light on me today with a quick reference from his book, Golden Keys to Ascension and Healing Revelations of Sai Baba and the Ascended Masters. And I chose to enlighten you with key number 185, which states, the next golden key was learning not to limit God in terms of how he could help me. When I would pray to God, Sai Baba and the masters, I would not restrict myself to thinking that my prayers could manifest in only one particular manner. God works in mysterious ways. Sometimes we limit God by thinking things have to be a certain way. There is a classic story in which there is a great flood and a man prays to God for help while he is standing on the roof of his flooded home. First, neighbors come by to help, but he refused their help because he was waiting for God to rescue him. Then a boat came by and he refused help again. Finally, a helicopter came to save him from the flood. And again, he refused this help. Finally, the flood washed away his house and the man died. He found himself at the pearly gates and said to God and St. Peter, why didn't you answer my prayers? <laughs> God replied, what do you mean? Who do you think sent you your neighbors? Who do you think sent you the boat? Who do you think sent the helicopter? Be careful that you do not prevent God's blessings and bounty from flowing to you. Let God have free reign to help you as he sees fit, as he sees fit, rather than as you see fit. Miracles often happen in the most unexpected ways. As I have said previously, I challenge you on your spiritual path of light to begin the process of growing more, learning more, developing an inner connection with the sun presence within you, which is your Christ light, the mighty I am presence. And each night when you are ready to enter into that realm of sleep, make daily practice of meditating each night. And as you step into that great sea of abyss, you go like an arrow to those temples where you receive the power and perfection of the sacred fire. As you begin the process of discovering yourself, you start to build up the momentum and power from those temples of light. And it will start to open up the floodgates in assisting you on your path to assist the whole earth with perfection that God intends. 
Let us marinate on that for a moment as we go into preparing for our prayer invocation. I am presence. I invoke the mighty, majestic God presence to rise within me now and allow the mystery of life that unfolds thy creation to expand. Make that summon a joyous reality to thy children of earth enfold all of us in thy glorious radiance illumining the pathway for each one to never make a mistake shine upon us all miracles of light and love a victorious accomplishment. Infinite is thy patience. Enduring is thy love. Great is thy peace. Thou glorious presence that is active in all mankind. Thou mighty presence called nature responding to the God within thy creation, pour forth thy lavish abundance upon the children of earth, children of the four elements, I call unto thee, come, 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 and minister to the children of light. one would keep the love, radiance, burning, that every other condition might be put aside for the inflow of that mighty presence. Help us to go forward in your victorious accomplishment for the freedom of all life forever. Almighty I am. Almighty I am. Almighty I am. God for those beautiful words of life. Allow it to just instill itself inside of you. Sometimes we just have to take a moment and 
just receive the power of the words of God. All right, now. Our spiritual affirmation of the hour is this. I am miracles and miracles and miracles of healing. I am miracles and miracles and miracles of healing. I am miracles and miracles and miracles of healing. I am miracles and miracles and miracles of cosmic purity. I am miracles and miracles and miracles of cosmic purity. I am miracles and miracles and miracles of cosmic purity. I am miracles and miracles and miracles of victorious accomplishment now and forever. I am miracles and miracles and miracles of victorious accomplishment now and forever. I am miracles and miracles and miracles of cosmic Christ purity and miracles and miracles and miracles of victorious accomplishment and miracles and miracles and miracles of healing. The all Christ healing way now and forever. spiritual guidance for the hour is this. The definition of a miracle seems to be that it is a phenomenon concerning which we neither understand the causative laws ourselves nor believe them to be understood by that large body of scientific workers in whom we put our trust and faith. Christian miracles such as those at Lourdes are, according to the theologians, the, susp suspension, the suspension of the effect of a law of nature by God as its author. But such an idea does not satisfy the occultist. According to him, there is no suspension of law. There may appear to be, but actually the miraculous phenomenon is brought by, about by a deeper law, not yet discovered and enunciated by esoteric science. When the greater law is known our mental concept of a lesser one will be modified. Madam H.P. Plavatsky stated the occult viewpoint thus, a miracle is not a violation of the laws of nature as is believed by ignorant people. Magic is but a science, a profound knowledge of the occult forces in nature and of the laws governing the visible or the invisible worlds. Such occult laws are known to esoteric science, but those who possess such knowledge have always been few in number and not generally known to the public. So public opinion usually discounts their existence and the existence of any esoteric body of knowledge. Miracles, as found in the records, fall into a number of classes. Bhagavan Das classifies the miracles of Lord Krishna as follows. Number one, giving illuminating visions. Number two, seeing at a great distance. Number three, 
multiplying small amounts of food or other material things to create large quantities. Number four, projecting his subtle body or bodies to appear simultaneously in several places at once. Number five, healing the sick and deformed by a touch. Number six, on rare occasions, bringing the dead to life. Number seven, laying dooms on particularly grievous sinners, such as the one who murdered infants and sleepers. Jesus Christ performed a similar wide range of miracles. But perhaps the emphasis was different. The Nazarene seems to have concentrated more on healing the sick, the maimed, and the insane. But he also performed much of what we now call phenomena. He levitated over the water. He made himself invisible. He multiplied food. He turned water to wine. He raised the dead. And if the records are straight, his greatest phenomenal magic came at the end of the story. After death, he dematerialized his body to bring it out of the tomb rematerialized it into a plastic malleable form so that at times it was not recognizable by his disciples and finally on the mount of olives he raised that etherealized body of earth to another plane of existence Krishna and Christ are the two outstanding miracle workers of the world scriptures, but there have been many others of lesser stature or sometimes perhaps merely of lesser fame. Some have been able to perform one or two classes of miracles Others have had power over many. The early Christian apostles could heal the sick and perform other wonders. Apollonius of Tyana in the first century AD could do likewise and more. Once his mere arrival in a town was sufficient to stop an epidemic of plague there. Many saints and mystics have shown miraculous powers such as levitation, bilocation, or astral travel. Throughout the centuries, there have been ample signs of a hidden brotherhood of occultists who were adepts in various branches of the high magic. In the latter half of the last century, Madam H.P. Blavatsky, startled and incredulous Western world with a stream of inexplicable phenomena. Apparently, from nowhere, she produced a variety of articles when needed. Fruit, crockery, cutlery, jewelry, embroidered handkerchiefs, books, letters, and other things. She is said to have converted one type of matter into another, to have traveled in her subtle body, and sometimes to have made her physical body invisible. She was able to see things from the past or from a great distance in what she called the astral light. To anyone who studies the evidence thoroughly and without prejudice, there is no doubt 
that Madame Blavatsky was a genuine worker of what the world calls magic. Or perhaps it might be closer to the truth to say that in many cases, the magic was done through her by certain highly advanced yogis or adepts whose Chila disciple she was. It has been stated that she was a medium, but in its association with spiritualistic practice, this word connotes loss of consciousness, and Madame Blavatsky never lost consciousness when phenomena were being performed through her. She preferred to use the word mediator rather than medium in describing the part she played. The adepts who worked through her were living far away, but they were not limited by space. They were able to know what was happening at a distance and to, that, to take action, either through travel in subtle bodies or by some other means towards so-called miracles past and present current public opinion may be said to fall into three categories there are those perhaps the majority in the western world who say that miracles is all moonshine that it has no basis in fact there are on the other hand those who, through personal experience or for some other reason, accept the miraculous as quite factual. And finally, there are some, a growing number, who keep an open mind on the question. They feel that events which are beyond the bounds or rational explanation are not necessarily beyond the bounds of possibility. They feel, indeed, rationality and the very idea that not all the laws and forces of the universe are yet stated in the textbooks of modern science. Many other great teachers have taught the same law in various ways. Sai Baba of Shirdi, for instance, told his followers that in the course of, con of concentration on one's guru or God in any form, one becomes, if sincere, more calm, more placid, and in a number of cases, the latent power of reading the minds of others or of seeing clairvoyantly are spontaneously acquired. This brings us to the question of the different levels of magic from the high white transcendental type down through different shades of gray to black magic or sorcery. Many kinds of miracles are worked through the cooperation of beings from other planes of existence, such as nature spirits, elementals, discarnate humans, and divas or angelic beings. This theory seems to be the most widely held as it has been stated by practically all magicians, high and low, who have had anything to say on their modus operandi. Colonel H.S. O'Cott, founder, president of the Theosophical Society, states that the members of the last great school of theurgy in old Alexandria believed in elementary spirits whom they e evoked and controlled for calling forth and commanding the different classes of beings there is always a secret know-how. This includes not only tantra, mantra, or yantra, the right ritual 
write words and write geometrical and mathematical figures, but also certain self disciplines, and above all, the development of the willpower. The more the will is developed, the fewer the ceremonial aids are needed. If a man has reached such lofty standards of action, perhaps through the evolution of many incarnations spent on earth, the miraculous powers will surely be his. They are a part of his pure divine nature. When a person is merged in God, all powers, all knowledge, all wisdom, all perfection, which are termed divine, shine forth from such a person. All who have ever written on this difficult subject have said the same thing. Eliphas Levi wrote, to command nature, man must be above nature. And Joseph and Moser in his history of magic written over a century ago said that divine miraculous works are possible only to those who have converted their whole life into a divine one who are no longer slaves to the senses. At the highest level, we can say that miracles are the work of God coming through a purified person who incarnates, gives earthly human form to divinity. Christ said, the Father, God, that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works, which are miracles. I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Spiritual guidance came out of Sai Baba, Man of Miracles by H. Murfret, 1971. And so I love just shining the Christ message through our spiritual teachings to you all because and deep thought and concentration, we must all adhere to the nudgings from the heavenly body. And within the heavens, we find the angelic kingdom. And we also find our beloved and blessed seven mighty Elohim the heavenly host and the ascended ones who watch over us, who are the silent watchers and who guide us unerringly always. And so our prayer supplication for this hour is this. When we make ready our heartfelt calls, to the ascended and heavenly host of the light, we must invoke the Christ presence, the great I am that I am, that resides within each of us to go into conditions, dissolving, purifying, and releasing that which needs to be consumed through and by the violet consuming flame, which is the sacred fire, so that it can act for all 
who are working towards perfection. Please give your attention to your beloved Christ presence now as we together focus on our sacred heart flame and all the heavenly host of ascended masters who are being called throughout the universe on tonight. In your mind's eye, just listen to my voice and repeat after me if you want. We send our pure intentions and feelings of love and thanksgiving to the source of all life on tonight. The supply of God of a thousand suns and the power of the three times three and the threefold flame acting on our behalf. We ask the mighty victorious presence of all life to go into those conditions of life and heal every man, woman, and child throughout our region and the rest of the world. We ask for forgiveness now, forgiving ourselves for all the mistakes that we have done on our journey and not loving ourselves completely to know who we truly are as human beings. Forgiving others who have wreaked havoc upon our lives because we must forgive them for all the wrong that they have caused us just because they could without our fully grasping what we were getting ourselves into. But we know that you, God, were always there and with us every step of the way. Those who purposefully drove conflict dissonance and disputes into our world of form to continue the drama on our screen of life and drive home the performance of a lifetime just to keep the arguing going to keep the fussing going to keep fighting going on and on and on at a heightened level to cause more hurt and pain to ensue and bring about more degradation to our body temple, which brought about conditions of the mind and body to no longer have the energies we once had because of all the mess we got ourselves into throughout the years of not realizing our true worth, our true soul selves. And for this to continue playing in the backdrop of our memory to cause us to not forget the very things that must be forgiven so that we can go about our lives without the limitations haunting us. We call forth all obstruction. We call for all obstruction in our thoughts feelings, and spiritual body, along with words that have been spoken negatively from us and those of others who doused upon us 
to be annihilated instantly today and for them to be completely indestructible, purified and sustained until we all are wholly ascended and free in the light of God. We are ascension manifesting every day, always and at all times. We call to the mighty I am presence, the higher mental bodies of all mankind and to all great beings, powers and legions of lights, especially our beloved Saint Germain, Jesus, Mother Mary, angels of purity, angels of ascension, the seven mighty Elohim, and all the angels and beings from the violet flame temples, the temples of purity, healing and light, and all who govern the purifying, healing, freeing, miraculous activities of light, and the sacred fire, the sacred love, of the sacred fire to this earth, all upon it and in its atmosphere. We ask that you come forth in the name, love, wisdom and power, authority and invincible victory of the beloved mighty I am presence of everyone on earth. The ascended masters the light of God that never fails, God's infinite forgiveness and mercy, eternal, invincible victory, freedom, the supremacy of divine justice and balance to all life. And the mightiest Herculean, miraculous purity, miraculous peace, miraculous authority, protection, and perfection in the universe. And please annihilate, annihilate, annihilate all of mankind's suffering, dis-ease, destruction, mistakes, impurity, problems, struggles, limitations, and lack of every kind, that which is of the mind, body, and affairs, their causes, effect, record, and memory from all life, substance, and energy in the universes, this instant and forever, fire us with your cosmic Christ feeling of the instantaneous fulfillment in our body temple. As we project within us your acceptance, your authority, your confidence, your determination, and your cosmic power of the light of a thousand suns which compels billions and billions and billions of gigantic ascended master I am miracles of healing here and now for all under this radiation and all who call to us for assistance. Allow it to expand and expand and expand and increase forever. Almighty I am. Almighty I am. Almighty I am. Let's just marinate on that prayer for a moment. We thank the mighty 
I am presence, the source of all life, for just being with us in our sacred heart temple each and every day that we rise and we go to bed at night, especially when we are alone and to ourselves and able to just go into contemplation, consecrating that which needs to be expressed on the inside, focusing deeply on what we need. to just to marinate on this teaching. I'm going to close with Dr. Joshua Stone's key number 208. Rely on God and God's laws for abundance. And it states, the next golden key has been to rely only on God and God's laws for my prosperity. Many people rely on outside things for their security in life. Yet all outside things, including people, can be taken away and ultimately will be. The only real security in life is God, the Ascended Masters, the power of Sai Babi, Baba, I'm sorry. The power of Sai Baba and God's laws. Para, Paramahansa Yogananda had an affirmation I like. It says, God is my stocks and bonds and financial security. God is my stocks and bonds and financial security. God is my stocks and bonds and financial security. I would change this to God, Sai Baba, the Ascended Masters, the angels, my personal power, and the power of my subconscious mind are my stocks and bonds and financial security. Many people rely on only one level of for manifestation. For some, it is just personal power and physical action. Some use only prayer. Others focus on affirmations and visualizations. Others rely on the angels, Sai Baba, or another master. Others focus on God. I say, use all of them and more to build your inner strength and ability to manifest. What is within you can never be taken away. All things can be stripped away as they were in my life. But I was able to build it all back again, even bigger because I trusted these inner laws. As A Course in Miracles says, miracles are natural. They are a natural byproduct of applying God's laws in a positive manner. And I think I want to go to the next one, which is 209, because it says, love yourself. The next golden key relates to self-love and manifestation. I have seen many people in my counseling practice in the past who were doing tons of affirmations and prayers, but not getting the results they wanted. As I explored this with them, I discovered that the block was lack of self-love. 
This is the ultimate negative affirmation. When people don't feel deserving of receiving God's bounty, it is often because of real or imagined past transgressions, right? Then this belief becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Even when it is unconscious, this also is faulty thinking. For in truth, all are God, all are the Christ, and all are worthy of love. So it is important to identify with the diamond and not the mind. It is important to identify with the diamond <clears throat> and not the mud. I'm sorry, I said mind. It's mud. <laughs> So that is key 209. And I will stop here. <laughs> I have had the most joyous time tonight. <laughs> oh my. And um, I will say that I have had interruptions in this broadcast. <laughs> I have been coughing in the background, the backdrop of this. And um, <laughs> I've had to stop. So I may have to do this whole entire uh, series over again, um, depending on um, the level of how many stops I had to do. But I thank each and every one of you for um, just listening and receiving what you need to receive out of this with love and gratitude to the ever-present one and all of you. This is Tammy Dennis with Destiny, the Open Door in our Spiritual Life Teachings, bidding you good night. And good morning, wherever you are in the world at this time. Kadosh, 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 Adonai, Sabiot. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. Adonai, dear destiny, the open door. God bless you all. Namaste. Peace be with you and upon you.